What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 joint tutorial for you. In this video we're going to talk about how to use the slider joint in order to create a door simulation that simulates the door actually moving with limits on each side. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So what we have here is we have a model that contains the track the two pieces of door hardware and the door. And note that all of those are in here as components because you can't just use bodies in order to create joints inside of Fusion 360. And so what we're gonna do in this situation is we're gonna set this up with a slider joint so that this can slide along this edge inside of Fusion 360. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating an as-built joint. And so to do that, we're gonna go up to assemble, we're gonna click on the button for as-built joint. And what we wanna do is we wanna select our track then we want to select our door hardware. So we're going to click right here in order to do that. Notice this shakes when you first do that. That's because that puts that in here as a rigid joint. Well, what we want this to do is we want this to be a slider joint. So what that means is that's going to slide along an axis. And notice that when we do that, what that's going to ask us to do is that's going to ask us for a reference. And so in this situation, we're going to select any line that runs this direction. So because we want this to slide along that direction. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna click on this edge right here. So you can see how that's gonna work. And this is a little bit tricky. It's kind of odd in the sense that you can't click on okay. You have to kind of click off of this and then this slider joint is gonna go in here. And the first thing you're gonna notice is right now, this is animating your track sliding rather than your hardware. And so that's because we selected our track first. What we wanna do is we wanna select our hardware first. So we're just gonna do this again. We're gonna select our hardware group. Then we're gonna select our track. Now, this is going in here properly. We can click on OK. And so the problem right now though, is if we click and drag this, the whole thing is going to move. That's because our track isn't grounded. So to start off, we wanna take our track right click on it and click on ground. That means that the track can't move around anymore. Well now, you can see how I can click and move this and it'll only allow me to move it along the green axis. So this is kind of the way we want this to be, but there's a few other things we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set this up so that when we move one piece of hardware, our door moves along with it. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna create another as-built joint. So we're gonna go to assemble, as built joint, then we're gonna click on our hardware and our door. And in this situation, we wanna click right here, we wanna click on the button for rigid. And so what that means is we've basically created a joint in here where we have a rigid joint between this, this piece of hardware and this door. And so now we're gonna click on okay. And what that means is now whenever I move this slider, my door is linked to my slider and they're gonna to move together. And so what I wanna do now is I'm gonna create another rigid joint between this door and this slider. So that way, everything will move together. So we can click on as-built joint. We wanna select our door and our other piece of hardware. So now this is a rigid joint. Well now, that means that if I drag my door or this piece of hardware, or this piece of hardware, they're all linked together. So they're all gonna move in concert now because they have a rigid joint between them. So I'm just gonna put this back in place. And then now the only thing we need to change is at the moment, if I click and drag this too far, kind of like in real life, if you don't have anything to stop this object, it'll come out of the track. And so we don't want this to come out of the track. So what we wanna do is we're gonna add some joint limits. So that means that we're gonna limit how far this joint is going to allow us to go. So in this situation, we're gonna click this drop down. we're gonna right click on our joint, and we're gonna click on edit joint limits. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to set the minimum movement of our joint. So in this situation, we're gonna set our minimum movement to right here. And then, we wanna set our maximum movement. So to set our maximum movement, we're gonna drag this over here. And because I know this is a 12 foot long piece and I know my door is about three foot six inches wide, I'm just going to move this 12 times 12 inches minus the width of my door. So in this case, that's gonna be four foot. So 48 inches. 
we're going to click on OK. So now, if we try to move our door, our joint limit is going to stop us right here. And we can set this joint limit to be a little bit further if we want it to. So we can right click on here, edit our joint limit, and we can just click on this little button right here in order to adjust that. So now, that'll go about this far, that was too far, so we'll just adjust it back a little bit. So now, we have a joint that'll allow us to make our door roll from this point to this point. So those will kind of roll together. And we may talk in the future about maybe doing a motion link where wheels turn. Honestly, for the sake of the simulation, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do that, to make the wheels turn. I mean, you probably could tie like a motion link together and make those spin, but especially for something like this where you can't see the wheels, there's really no reason to do that. But now what we have is we have an accurate simulation of the limits of movement of this door inside of our model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Do you like these joint tutorials? Are you finding them helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.